everyone so for today's video i'm going to be doing a gcse's tips and advice video i'm going to be focusing this video on certain subjects and telling you guys how i revise recommending websites revision tips organization tips just a general gcse advice video recently i've been noticing in my instagram dms and just comments on my youtube videos there's been a lot of you saying i'm doing my gcse's i'm super scared i need advice i have no motivation to revise so i took my gcse's last year so obviously i do have experience of what to expect and how my sort of experience went certain ways of how i revised and just little things that i felt like just made a big difference i'm really really excited to do this video because i've been planning it for quite a while i've got all my sort of of advice tips and tricks in my notes section so I'm just gonna make my way through let me find my notes section because I actually don't know where it is so I've actually put a lot down so grab a snack grab a drink enjoy me rambling about school so the first thing I'm going to do is talk through the subjects I took for GCSEs because some of you might be interested some of you might not be at all um so if you're not skip ahead. So I took maths, English, history, religious studies, science, so biology, chemistry and physics, photography and graphics. I didn't take a language because I was so bad at it that I dropped it and replaced it with graphics and I'm so glad I did that because I prefer graphics way more than language. So the only subjects I'm going to be talking about are maths, English, science and history because I feel like they're the sort of main subjects that people worry about. Um, I'm really sorry for taking geography, obviously I didn't take that so I would have no idea how to revise it but I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on YouTube that will tell you how to revise geography so if you're taking history hopefully this will help you out. First subject I'm going to be talking about is maths. Now <laughs> Probably a lot of you already know this, I was honestly the worst at maths. Ever since I pretty much started school, I was always in bottom sets and I was always doing like extra maths classes or I was always taken out of a lesson to do extra revision or I just wasn't good at it, it just never clicked. So the first thing I recommend for maths is Corbett Maths and I basically ordered these revision cards off of this website. Yeah, they're revision cards and they do them for all topics that you need to know for maths basically and on the revision card it will tell you about that topic like a little sentence of how to do it in the most like simple way possible then on the back of the revision card there'll be this sort of code that you scan via your phone and then once you've scanned it into your phone it will come up with a video and it's almost like a tutorial on how to do it and it just talks you step by step and honestly that was a huge lifesaver for me because I feel like I learn better when someone's actually explaining it to me than me trying to figure out my own head because I get super confused and then there'll be practice questions and you can just keep doing this until you feel confident with that certain topic then you can move on to the next one and I must say there is a lot of topics that um, come in the revision cards so don't get too overwhelmed with it and think oh my god, how am I supposed to know all of this? Because I'm sure there will be topics that you already know. I will leave a link in the description box below if you do want to um, order them revision cards. This isn't sponsored at all. I just 100% recommend it because it helps me out a lot with anything that I was unsure about. So the next thing I recommend is Primrose Kitten. She has a YouTube channel and she does science and maths. And I'll also recommend her for science because she was super good. Um, to help me revise personally. She made sort of like tutorial videos on certain topics and um, she did like diagrams and it was just really easy to watch and just learn from so I really recommend her channel. I will again leave that link in the description box below. So the second to last thing for maths is my maths. Now I think pretty much every single school has access to this website but if you don't you can actually sign up. Um, my maths is again really good for um, talking through any topics that you're unsure about and um, there's like practice questions on there. So the very last revision tip I have for maths is past papers and practice questions. This is honestly so important if you want to feel more relaxed and chill in the actual exam. Past papers are so good because you get the whole idea of what it's going to be like in the actual exam. You can see the layout, you can see how many marks certain questions get and you can time yourself and it's really good to like do as many past papers as you can and then hand them into your teacher. I feel like the more past papers as you do the more relaxed you're going to feel in the actual exam because you would have already done so many so by the time you're actually sitting the exam you're going to be like oh I've done this before like I'm used to this and you know the layout you know the sort of how like the marks work and everything um next we're going to go on to English and how I revised for that subject um in the end I got a 
I got a B in English language and I got a C in English literature, which is a four and a five in the new um, grading system. I wouldn't have been able to pass English without Mr. Bruff, honestly. He he definitely made me pass like 100% because he was like the only person I used to revise for English. Um, so basically he has a YouTube channel, he also has revision guides and the amount of effort and like content he puts out to help people with English is insane. There's so much effort that goes into his videos. He would have at least made a video about the certain book that you might be doing in English language. So I did Macbeth in Spectacles and Jekyll and Hyde and he had made videos for all of them books. Mr. Bruff uploads um, like example answers. So I think he gets students to send in their answers and then he'll go through it in a video and he'll sort of um, analyze it and say what's good and what's bad and what you could improve on. He also makes up songs so you can remember quotes which is honestly like so helpful. I think it was Jekyll and Hyde he made a song for and it just once I listened to it quite a few times it just stuck in my brain. The next thing I have done for English is York Notes and they're basically a revision guide um, for each book that you're having to learn in English language. So I had a York notebook for Macbeth, Jekyll and Hyde and Inspector Calls and yeah it was basically just a revision guide. It had like important things to remember, it had practice questions in it. Um, so yeah I just made notes from that book and highlighted anything important so I'll leave the York notes um, revision guides in the description in case you want to buy one yourself because they really really helped honestly. Flashcards, like honestly do as many flashcards as you can, mainly do it for key quotes and just highlight it. Each poem I had to learn I made a flashcard for so I could just read it through. Even if it's just like a little bit of information about each poem, at least you have like a rough idea about each one. That is all of the revision tips I have for English. Now I'm going to go on to science. So the first revision tip I have for science is the CGP books. Um, I think you will get like an offer to buy them at your school because they're like the main revision guides I think you have to have. But the only problem I have with these books is that there was a lot of information on every single page that it felt very overwhelming and it just, it was, I found it very stressful to like even look at a page because there was just so much information. What I'd recommend doing is just selecting any key information and popping on a flashcard. So, write the topic on one side and then the answer on the other side and once I had a lot of flashcards for like biology, chemistry and physics I'd get my mum to test me and she'd be like oh what is photosynthesis and then I would be like oh it's the next thing I recommend is free science lessons this is a youtube channel I'm not sure what his name is it sounds kind of rude um but I know his channel is called free science lessons and um, he basically talks through each topic. I watched, I mainly used his channel for any topics that I literally had no clue about. He shows like diagrams, um, so it's literally like a free science lesson, you get me. I'll leave his channel linked in the description box below if you want to go check him out. That is all my tips for science. Now I'm going to go on to history, which is the last subject I'm going to be talking about. I was generally not passing any of my exams, like mock exams up to the real thing. I'd never passed a history exam in my life and it was the most stressful and upsetting thing ever because I saw people doing really well and I was like why don't I get it like what am I doing wrong I'm like working really hard. I made sure I tried as hard as I could for history and it paid off so these are the revision tips and tricks that I did. The first thing I recommend for history is the Revise and Excel History Revision Guides. I will leave them linked in the description box below. Um, there's pictures, it shows the information really clearly and I basically got one of these revision guides for the topic I was doing. So I did Germany, I did um, Conflict in Asia and I did the Elizabethan topic. Oh yeah, there's also practice questions in these revision guides, so I recommend doing them as well because then you get a sort of rough idea of what it might be like in the actual exam. I made a couple mind maps for certain topics I was really stuck on. I tried to make it as pretty and colourful as possible. I stuck it up on my wall and I could just read it whenever if I was getting ready in the morning or if I just wanted to like quickly test myself. It was just good to look at and just keep it 
flowing in your mind. The last thing I have down is just practice questions. Honestly, this was so important to me anyway because I went to like an after school history revision class that my school sort of like held every Thursday, I think it was. And we basically just do practice questions. You just get a rough idea of what it might be like in the actual exam. You understand how many marks certain questions are how to lay out your answers. Now I'm gonna go on to motivation tips and just general organization. First thing we have down is, oh yeah, motivation. I had so many like, um, not questions, but DMs from you guys saying, I literally lack motivation in wanting to revise. I just wanna sleep, not do it. There was days where I was like, I really cannot be bothered. I think we all go through this, but once you get yourself into a routine, it will just start flowing, is that you need to know that it will be over before you know it, and you have a long summer waiting for you. Um, because honestly, my GCSE experience flew by. Thinking about, like, when it was my last day, I was like, wow, where has that time gone? I remember starting my GCSEs, and now I'm literally leaving school. So just think about the ending result, and that once it's over, you have a lot of time off just to chill, relax, reward yourself sort of thing. So... That's how I like to think of it. Um, also, something quick which I actually didn't put down is that I put my lock screen um, as my exam timetable, but then I had like really motivating quotes, which sounds kind of cringe, but honestly, every time I turned on my phone, I was like, you know what? Yeah, like that actually really boosted my mood. So I put little reminders about drinking water, eating healthy. The next thing I have is that you can only do your best. And if you know you've tried, that's all you can do. And that's literally it. Like. If you know you've put as much effort as you can in, then that's it. No one can force you to do any better. You've given it a go, you've tried your best. So when you do come out of that exam, you're like, okay, I did my best. That's literally it. You can't just keep um, putting pressure on yourself. Like, oh, if I did that, if I did this, you've done it. At least you tried and that's all you can do. Another tip I have is don't overdo it. Otherwise, you're just going to get more stressed and tired and the information won't sink into your head. So... Don't be revising at like 10 p.m. at night because you feel like you need to do like hours and hours of work because honestly, your mind is just gonna be overloaded and it's just gonna feel stressed and you're gonna feel maybe more anxious and it's just not a good mix. So make sure you do have like a cutoff point where you stop revising, whether it's like at 8 p.m. and then you can just sort of chill for the evening and let your brain relax and then you can go to sleep feeling as chill as possible and you're not thinking about like maths and equations and everything. I'd recommend just having breaks in between because if you're doing revision non-stop and you're not having a break, it's just not gonna sink in. It might for some people, but I feel like overall it's not the best way to do it. Oh yeah, like take breaks, chill out, eat some food, drink lots of water, like just drink as much water as you can because you wanna stay hydrated. You don't wanna be getting headaches during your like little revision sessions. So yeah, staying hydrated is very, very important. And also getting enough sleep is so important. That comes with like not revising too late because you don't wanna be going to bed at like 11 p.m. and then having to get up at like half six because you're gonna be so tired because revising is like mentally draining. When you wake up the next day, you feel refreshed, you have so much more energy and you can just focus more on whether you're doing like an exam or like a practice exam or you know, you've got a lot of lessons that day. Have a lot of sort of self-love, put a face mask on, have a bath, do things that you enjoy walking the dog, just so you can sort of take your mind off of everything which is going on around you. And then the last thing I have on my list is for organization. So one thing I would recommend is doing a revision timetable. Now I just did a homemade one. I basically did like a grid from Monday to Sunday and I put down the subjects I was gonna be revising each night. So I knew when I got home, I was like, okay, what's on Monday? Okay, I'm gonna do science and English. And I'd make sure I'd have like a 10 minute break in between and then my cutoff point would be 7 p.m i'd stop revising obviously there's a lot of subjects that you have to revise and it can be quite like overwhelming and you're like oh what do i do first do i do this do i do that so getting a revision timetable will be so helpful and you can just stick it up on your wall also try and keep your room as tidy as possible because um what i found is that if my room was quite messy and i had a lot of books everywhere and bits of paper my mind would feel really stressed and like crowded. So that is everything for my GCSEs advice and tips video. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it's helped some of you out. Please let me know if it did in the description, in the description, in the comment section below. Um, that'd be really, really helpful for me. And yeah, I wish you all the best of luck for GCSEs. I know it's still not 
It's actually, when do people start the GCSEs? I started mine in April, so yes, you've still got a lot of time. Chill, relax, and take one step at a time. Um, and yeah, if you have any more questions about GCSEs or if you're unsure about certain things, then please let me know in the comments below and I will try and get back to you. I think that's all I have to say. I hope you guys have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.